my name is Candy Merrow Carlson. I'm the District 2 City Councilor here in Worcester. It's truly a pleasure to be here today on behalf of Mayor Petty and to welcome you all here to our city and beautiful District 2. The Healy Driscoll administration under the leadership of Secretary Ed Augustus has taken a significant significant step forward with the recently filed Affordable Homes Act, a testament to their unwavering commitment to making housing more accessible to all. In Worcester, we too place housing development and affordability at the forefront of our priorities. The housing bond bill will only help in our efforts. The courthouse lofts is a great example. The housing bond bill proposes expanding the Housing Stabilization Fund and the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, which are two of the state's resources that were leveraged for, the, this, for many projects. Other more recent housing projects in Worcester include new construction like Worcester Housing Authority's new property, a place to live on Lewis Street that had a grand opening yesterday morning, or revitalizing old properties like the historic Mission Chapel, now Mission on Summer. Because we saw that these properties had potential to serve new and necessary purpose, the City of Worcester is committed to finding housing solutions. Together we will continue to build the community where everyone can find a place to proudly call home. I'd now like to welcome our friend, Governor Mara Healy. Well, <clears throat> thank you so much, Counselor, for that introduction and for the partnership that you and Mayor Petty and your council colleagues have shown us. And it's uh, terrific to be here today with, with all of you. Um, City Manager Eric Batista, thank you for your leadership. My colleagues and partners uh, in the legislature, thank you all, Senator Moore, uh, Representative O'Day, Representative LaBeouf, uh, Councilor King, okay. I think we got others. I know that uh, Senator Kennedy and Rep Keefe, uh, Rep Mahoney and Rep Donahue also wanted to be here and, and some of their team are, are here as well. Um, but truly, we thank you for, for the partnership. And it's great to see so many folks from the Worcester Regional Chamber, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, thank you for all that you do um, in making sure that the business community is, is there and present and helping us all to make the case for what needs to happen in our great state. Uh, to my colleague and friend uh, and, and your former colleague, Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities at Augustus, uh, back in his old stomping grounds. And Patrick Lee and Trinity Financial, um, thank you so much for the work that you do. I met one of your regional managers and I was very excited to ask how many projects she's working on. She said four, and the hope is there are more and more um, of these coming online. And finally, we have our friends in the building trades represented, in particular, the carpenters, the painters. Um, we just thank you so much for the work that you do. You guys do great, great stuff. Uh, but to all members and representatives of the building trades, um, thank you so much for making this project and other projects like this such a success. We're here today to talk about courthouse lofts and to talk about affordable homes. I did want to, though, before we begin, acknowledge the terrible losses that the Worcester community has suffered recently. I think about Randy Melendez of Southbridge, just 19 years old, a victim of the shooting at Worcester State over the weekend. And then I think about last night and North High School's Carl Hans Belliard, who lost his life in Salem, where he was a freshman in Salem State. I met Carl and his teammates and Coach Al uh, months ago with the Lieutenant Governor herself, a former Salem State basketball player. We invited them in. Um, many of you were with us, I believe, mm -hmm. when they came and visited us in the office. And we met Carl and we took pictures with Carl. And he was the only senior on that state championship team. And uh, he leaves a mom and uh, a younger sibling, and it's incredibly, incredibly sad. Um, heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Um, there's more to learn uh, about the circumstances, of course, but my heart goes out to all who've been affected by gun violence, who continue to be plagued 
by gun violence, senseless gun violence that we see in our communities, particularly among young people. And it's something that we have to, that we have to do everything we can to address. My thoughts are with their families uh, right now, and I just wanted to take a moment just to acknowledge that. So we're here at Courthouse Lofts, which was once a historic courthouse here in the great city of Worcester. And it's pretty special. We just concluded a tour of this building. We see a beautiful historic building in the heart of a great city now turned into homes for over 100 families. It's fantastic. Um, homes that we see are affordable for families of a range of incomes, and that's so important. And I think it's important to, to uh, highlight what's possible when people come together in true partnership to get something like this done. Secretary Augustus is gonna say more about how it all came to be, um, but it, it's something that it, it, we wanna see more of as an administration, and that's why we did file the recent legislation, the Affordable Homes Act. It's a $4.1 billion plan to create or preserve new homes, new units for low and middle income families all around the state. It's a plan to address the acute housing shortage we face in the state and enable more people to stay here, to come to school here, to grow families here, to grow businesses here. That's what this is about. And that's why this administration is so focused on housing. We know that there is no greater challenge right now facing our state than housing. And we know what's possible and we know how to get there, and we think that what's included in this Affordable Homes Act that we recently filed will do great things in terms of getting us here. Uh, but affordability, you know, is something that we've been focused on as a team for a while now. We're proud working with our partners in the legislature to have signed into law the first major tax cuts in Massachusetts in over 20 years, tax cuts that are putting money back in the pockets of people around the state, whether they're seniors or parents or renters or homeowners. We doubled the senior circuit breaker from $1,200 to $2,400. Uh, seniors will get that money regardless of whether they actually pay a rent or a mortgage. Increasing the child and dependent tax credit to be the most generous in the country, which is so, so important while removing the two-child cap. Um, we're really proud of, of the pieces of the affordability agenda that together in partnership we've been able to deliver. But we've got to deliver on housing and making housing more affordable. And that's what this is about. It's threatening our state's competitiveness. It's making, harder, um, it's making it harder to attract workers and to attract employers. And fundamentally, it's putting some of our most vulnerable residents at real risk of houselessness, homelessness, and moving others closer to the brink. So we need to act. Uh, one of the first things we did out of the gate was to create the position for the first time ever. The state has a Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, and we named Ed Augustus to be in charge. We also, in our first budget, were able to add close to 1,000 new rental vouchers. We launched the country's first climate bank ever, dedicated solely to affordable housing, and we expanded tax cuts um, that make homes more affordable for low- and middle-income families. We think about the HDIP program, the Housing Development Incentive Program, which is a tax break that unlocks housing, particularly in gateway cities. And we've seen its positive impact here in Worcester and beyond. Um, that's why it was important, and we are grateful to the legislature in making sure that we increase that cap from $10 million to $57 million next year. That's going to support an estimated 12,500 new homes statewide, and it's gonna help us lower costs by making more units available and dealing with uh, the real demand issue we face. We also increased the low-income housing tax credit by 50% from 40 million to, 50 million to $60 million. Um, that's the tax break that helps fund these affordable homes like these here at Courthouse Lofts. 
but we want to do so much more. And that's what this legislation would do. It would authorize historic levels of capital investment across at least 18 different programs. Some are existing programs that are great. Some are new programs that we think we've got to create. Uh, programs like the Homeowner Production Tax Credit, programs like Housing Works, a new 100 and proposed $175 million investment in Housing Works. These are funds that cities and towns can use to prepare their infrastructure for new homes. We also want to address public housing and um, the fact that we've got too many units of housing, public housing that are either vacant or unused because they're in deplorable condition or you know they're not being maximized, and that's that's why we want to repair and modernize through this bond bill, 43 over 43,000 units of state-funded public housing. In addition, we want to create more homes for people who've been particularly vulnerable. We're talking about people with disabilities, veterans, those in need of supportive housing, uh, people coming out of homelessness, people recovering from substance use disorders. Right. So these are all important things. In addition to a proposed $200 million for a housing innovations fund, which would provide new solutions for residents with complex needs. So we think these are uh, the ideas, these are the policies. Um, this is what is going to help us move forward as a state. Uh, there's a lot of policies in there that are going to help empower local communities and fundamentally remove some of the barriers, some of the frictions that have gotten in the way of the kind of housing growth and development that we need to see as a state. So we're excited about it. We think it is super, super important. And we look forward to working in partnership with all of you to get this over the finish line. Um, again, I want to thank all of our wonderful hosts. It's great to be back in the heart of the Commonwealth and to celebrate all the good things that are happening. And I am um, particularly grateful to uh, my friend, Secretary Ed Augustus, who has been working his tail off all over the state in the last hundred or 50 so days that he's been on the job uh, doing great things and uh, and I'm proud to call him now to the podium. Secretary Augustus. Thank you, Governor, and thank you for the honor to serve in this role. Uh, when the governor asked me to uh, take on this responsibility and lieutenant governor, uh, they gave me one clear charge. We need more housing and we need it faster. Uh, and that's really what we set out to do in putting uh, the Affordable Homes Act uh, together, is to really deliver on that charge, that very clear and unequivocal uh, mandate uh, from the governor and lieutenant governor. And I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things that are in here in addition to what the governor mentioned. But first, I just want to say uh, thank you to all my Worcester peeps. Uh, it is wonderful to be home, surrounded by so many people I've worked with in so many different capacities over a lot of years, uh, and to be in this special uh, spot. Uh, as the governor heard during uh, the tour, this is a building that sat vacant for a number of years. Uh, it was really an eyesore and was a, a challenge for the city. We had this building, we had the auditorium next door, and the boys club, uh, all three public buildings right here in Lincoln Square. Uh, three public buildings that were really holding back some of the organic energy that was happening in Worcester, on, in our downtown, on the Highland Street area, the Grove Street area, and these buildings were kind of blocking the connection of that and the vitality that could be unlocked if these buildings could be brought back to positive use. Uh, this was the first building, and the secret to this building was having a partner like Trinity. Uh, Trinity was the partner that we needed for this project. They were able to put their thinking caps on, bring some very creative architects uh, that were able to use some really funky spaces, some really challenging spaces, and figure out how to turn them into just beautiful units, beautiful homes, uh, and save the historic character of this important uh, landmark in our downtown. Uh, and tomorrow, uh, we'll be at a groundbreaking uh, right across the street uh, where Wynn Development, sorry, Patrick, uh, <laughs> will be doing the Boys Club uh, and doing more affordable housing for seniors in downtown Worcester. So that's the second of the two buildings back in our productive reuse. And Jake Sanders, my former chief of staff over there, is leading the charge on the auditorium, and he's going to figure that out working with the city leadership uh, to get that 
last of the three big public buildings in downtown Worcester back into uh, positive production. So I want to just thank everybody who was involved in that, the City Council, Mayor Petty, uh, our legislative delegation took a lot of state resources, uh, Kate Racer had uh, black hair at the time, she's got gray hair now after this project because it took a lot of state resources to make this happen, but everybody was at the table, everybody was, was problem solving to make this happen. And that's really what we need to do going forward. Uh, and the Affordable Homes Act really allows us to do that. Uh, as the governor mentioned, $4.1 billion investment. It recapitalizes all the critical programs uh, that were used to bring this project to fruition. And it adds many new additional projects that we know are necessary. I'll give you one great example, the Momentum Fund. Uh, the Momentum Fund is a new idea uh, that is baked into this bond bill. The Momentum Fund would help have the state put in some dollars that would be leveraged by dollars from foundations, from endowments, who invest in real estate as part of their portfolio, but could be added to the modest state investment and create a fund that could take projects that we know are permitted, they're ready to go, the communities want them to move forward, and yet because of the interest rate environment, uh, and the cost of construction materials that some of those projects are on the sidelines. They no longer pencil out. We can move those projects on, back on track, get them in the ground, and get the construction underway with this new momentum fund. And so that's one of the kind of critical new ideas that are baked in here. I mentioned yesterday when we were at uh, a place to call home, tripling of the amount of capital dollars going into our public housing, tripling. We know how important that safety net housing system is here in Massachusetts, and we're the only state to have 43,000 units of housing, but we have not invested in it in the way that we should uh, and we need to. This bill begins to change that. This bill makes sure that our public housing is the kind of housing uh, that people deserve to live in, clean, healthy, and with dignity. And it also creates a new pot of money, $150 million, to decarbonize our existing public housing stock. We've got a lot of ambitious climate goals uh, that have been laid out, and we're never really going to meet those climate goals unless we decarbonize our housing stock, our existing housing stock. And our first responsibility is with our public housing infrastructure. And by putting aside that $150 million, we know we can do a lot to reduce the carbon footprint of our public housing in Massachusetts. Uh, in addition, there's, as the governor mentioned, 28 policy proposals that are in this bill. Uh, my friends in the legislature have got a lot of homework to do as they explore those 28 uh, policy ideas, but they reflect the input and the thinking of more than 120 organizations uh, that we met with that gave us ideas on things they thought, combined with the funding at these levels, would move the needle on housing production. Things like a local option transfer. So cities like Worcester, if they chose to take advantage of that local option, uh, would be able to bring in some revenue on high-end property sales and generate dollars that could then be invested back into affordable housing production and affordable housing preservation. Uh, ADUs by right. Uh, we think over uh, five years we can produce 8,000 new units of housing. We know there's a lot of folks who may live in a big house with a lot of bedrooms and the kids have grown up and moved away and there are folks who could take advantage of those ADU units and free up those larger units, larger homes uh, for growing families that need that kind of space. Uh, so ADUs by right is another tool in the toolbox. So a number of policy changes along with the tax credits and again those tax credits were hard at work in this project, those LIHTC tax credits uh, that are now funded thanks to uh, the legislature and the governor's signature from $40 million a year to $60 million a year. Those are some of the most important, powerful tools that are used for affordable housing production, including this project, and they'll be at hard at work uh, across the street at the Boys Club uh, bringing those units online. And so the tax increase, the increased tax credits, uh, the bond bill, the capital authorizations, and the uh, policy proposals, combined with the Housing Works program, as the governor mentioned, new dollars that support infrastructure improvements, which were necessary. We used the Mass Works project for this particular one. Now housing has a separate pot of money uh, that can support uh, housing production 
uh, when there's an infrastructure improvement needed. Uh, so there really is every vehicle possible being used uh, to incentivize and create more uh, housing production. So it's an all hands on deck, all ideas and all levers uh, working to try to increase our housing production. Uh, so I'm excited uh, to share that information with you. I know Worcester has historically used every tool in the toolbox. Uh, we're adding some new tools and I have no doubt uh, that Worcester will use those new tools uh, once this bill uh, becomes law. And I know that the next person who's up to speak, who I had a chance to work with during my entire time as city manager, uh, is just the guy uh, to use those tools, uh, working with the city council uh, to put those tools to good use here, to continue the uh, renaissance in Worcester, continue the effort of bringing uh, empty buildings back, particularly in our downtown, but across the neighborhoods of the city of Worcester, and create all of the good things, the home ownership opportunities, the decent places to live that we know are represented in the Affordable Homes Act. And it's my honor to introduce uh, our city manager, Eric Batista. Thank you, thank you, Secretary Augustus, and good afternoon, everyone. As you can see, it's a, it, we're very pleased to be here and welcome the governor to Worcester, welcome, and highlight the benefits of the Affordable Homes Act. It's an important act for the city, but it's also an important act for the state. The funding to increase housing production and lower costs comes at a critical time as we face ongoing housing challenges across Commonwealth, and we in Worcester are no exception, exception to that. A plan of this magnitude is exactly what is needed to meet the current crisis. It calls for innovative solutions in challenging the status quo, while offering clear objectives and goals to enact real and lasting change. The Affordable Homes Act will catalyze more affordable housing, sustainable development, and opportunities for residents of all socioeconomic status, and that's important, of all socioeconomic statuses. I'm also encouraged that the package of investments and policies goes hand in hand with Worcester's own new housing strategy, which is built on the pillars of housing production, preservation, and healthy homes, homeowner, tenant, and unhoused assistance, and also public policy. One particular priority of the Affordable Homes Act that I want to emphasize is the focus on preserving and, re and rehabilitating uh, existing priorities, properties such as the one we stand here today. Thanks in large part to my predecessor, uh, and current Housing Secretary Augustus. The old Worcester County Courthouse, originally built in 1845, was revitalized and converted into a courthouse lost not over 100 mixed income units, which I confirmed with Patrick here, over 72% of them are affordable units, which is huge. In addition to providing new homes for local residents, the project brought new energy to Lincoln Square while preserving the former courthouse historical character. With the help of the Affordable Homes Act, more projects like this will be possible, providing more housing through adaptive reuse in addition to new construction. So I want to thank the Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll for realizing the need for bold leadership, bold leadership to address the Commonwealth's housing challenges and for their ongoing partnership with Worcester in central Massachusetts. In fact, the Governor's office involved Worcester from the very beginning, and we played a central role in the housing working group to create the office. It, I had the pleasure of collaborating with, the official, with officials across the Commonwealth and was inspired by the innovative housing and community development projects already happening throughout the state. So I look forward to collaborating further to accomplish even more. And there's a lot of work ahead. But together, together, we can rise to the challenge. So I want to thank the state and federal delegations, uh, Mayor Petty, and also the entire city council body for the ongoing support and advocacy as we pursue these programs and solutions. I also can't go without thanking and giving a shout out to our uh, Executive Office of Economic Development, who's led by Peter Dunn, for managing our city's housing strategy and programs for which they will recently rec will, were recognized with the Massachusetts Housing Partnership Housing Hero Award. And believe me, we will take advantage of all those tools. Also, we wouldn't be able to move forward without an, our incredible partners, including our Community Development Corporation, nonprofit advocacy groups, developers, and local, state, and federal agencies. One of those essential partners is Trinity Financial, an essential partner, which oversaw the development of the courthouse laws and their continued collaboration with the city reflects their spirit, their spirit and willingness to take on transformative projects, 
not being afraid, not shying away, uh, for the benefit of the greater good of everyone. So with that, I'm happy to return things over to our good friend, Patrick Lee from Alternative Financial. Thank you so much, City Manager. Um, many people have said very wonderful things about this project here. And I want to tell you, Ed made us do it. <laughs> <laughs> but he also, he also helped us do it. And part of what this is today is all about is putting people in public office like Eric and uh, like Ed at the state with the tool and arming them with the tools where they can do things like this. So the housing bond bill, uh, the Affordable Homes Act does exactly that. I'll tell you a couple of things. One, when we completed, when we paid off the construction loan on this project, the interest rate was 1.8%, 1.8%. We are looking to finance another transaction, actually here in Worcester, that we're aiming to close in February, and the expected interest rate is almost 8%, almost 8%. So when the governor talks about there being a crisis and she has well explained that uh, the supply hasn't kept up with demand, there are also construction cost increases that are exacerbating the problem. There are interest rate increases that are exacerbating, uh, exacerbating the problem. We walk around a community like this and we say, there are wonderful things that have happened here. The revitalization of the three buildings at the this end of Main Street that uh, Ed talked about, uh, the provision of affordable units that both the city manager and the governor talked about here. Um, it's also the case that we've got this wonderful, wonderful mixed income community where a very low income person could intermingle with somebody that has the resources to pay $3,500 in rent in a beautiful space like this. And when that happens, both of those people are made more humane as a result of this. So it's important that we do this work for all of these reasons, all of these reasons. And as a developer, um, we recognize, we've got the good fortune of working across the Commonwealth and in other states as well, and what we recognize is that every single of our 351 cities and towns are different. And we have come to appreciate that the administration recognizes that also, and that in the Affordable Homes Act, there are a number of tools. There are a number of arrows in the quiver, as Ed and the governor talked about, some 18 programs and a number of other initiatives, recognizing the fact that what worked here might not be what works in Shrewsbury or some other community, but that the Commonwealth uh, 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 has the resources and has the tools so that all of the cities and towns in the Commonwealth can help to produce the housing that we need here. For a developer working at the local uh, level, that's really, really important that we have all of those different, different tools so that we can tailor it to be responsive to local communities. And again, kudos to the administration for recognizing that uh, that's an important piece of this. Uh, the governor is going to come back up, I think, to take some questions. But I do want to say, I do want to say, <clears throat> um, we in the development community, and I know others, very much appreciate the time and energy that you're putting to this governor. And we know that it's not just because you see this as important to the continued well-being of the Commonwealth, but also that you recognize and respect our citizenry and you're taking the time to come out and explain the problems that we face and the solutions that you have proposed it means a lot to me as a citizen, and I know to others we appreciate that. So thank, thank you. Patrick. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Patrick. And um, Ed and I are going to want to take you on the road with us as we go forward and uh, proselytize this, this important proposal, we think. You know, we've got to deal with the housing situation, and we can deal with it. Um, but it was great to see you. Many thanks to, to Mike Lozano, too, on your team, who took us around. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, we're happy, I'm happy to take questions on topic.
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, of the 23,000 individuals right now in emergency shelter, we know that half of them are Massachusetts families, you know, who've come on hard times. And the waiting lists alone, we know for places like this and other places that we've visited are really big. And it just speaks to how desperate people are across this state um, at a variety of income levels, and especially those who are, who are particularly vulnerable, um, how desperate the situation is, which is why we need more units. Well, thank you, everyone, and again, huge thanks to all the partners here, the city and its leadership, to Secretary Augustus and the team um, back in the administration. Uh, we really appreciate all the work that they are doing. Uh, to our city councilors, um, it's good to see you, and we thank you for the, the partnership, and to our colleagues in the legislature um, who have, both through the budget and the tax package done a lot uh, to further production of housing and you know hopefully we can work together to get this housing bond bill over the finish line so thanks everybody for coming out